All right. First thing we got to do with our crystal radio is we've got to uh, come up with a with a mounting board, our breadboard. Okay. Coil. Tuning condenser. Okay, the crystal. Okay, I'm going to say our tubes will go there. All right, so we're going to make a board. Okay, nine inches by ten inches. All right, look at this. <laughs> okay. All right, here we got it. All right, that's nine and a half, and we got plenty of room here. Okay. Okay, that's going to do perfect. our baseboard. Okay, next we have to make the mounting for the coil.
We've got a couple like that. Ah, another wafer socket. Ooh, brand new. Okay, I got two brand new wafer sockets. We'll use them. All right, I would say a little piece of a piece of clear plastic would be nice. Let me see if I have some. Okay, I'm going to make it. holes to hold the thing up. Okay, I'm going to put one right here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and sand it a little. Okay, we're just going to use dark walnut, plain old cheap hardware store dark walnut. OK, 
Okay? Now, we've got 95 degree heat outside, so I'm going to put these in the sun and let them bake until after lunch. And then we spray them with lacquer. Alright, this has been sitting, sitting for a couple hours out in the sun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to color this uh, coil. The coil looks pretty bad, so I'm going to get some, um, I'm going to use special walnut on the coil. Now, this is the same as walnut, but it's a lighter color, slightly lighter color. Okay. Okay, now this goes out in the sun for a couple hours and that'll dry it. We'll paint it. Alright, it's been sitting out in the sun for three hours. Okay, we shall pack it. it. Okay, we'll let that sit for a while and dry, and then we're ready to go start assembling. All right. Okay, we're going to get busy at this crystal radio here. We've got the base made up. Piece of wood, breadboard. We've got our coil and coil mounts. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is mount these coil mounts. And they go onto here. All right. I don't know how we're going to do this. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Next, we got a whole bunch of terminals. These will go next. I'm just going to stick them in loose because we're going to have to put wires on them.
Okay, that's for power supply and that's for the headphones. Okay, now our... Um, okay, we're not ready to mount the tube um, housing yet. These we're going to wire first. We have to wire up the pins first, then we'll mount that. But it'll fit in there. Okay, next we got the uh, tuning condenser, which goes right here. Up. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to wait. See, I have to get to these terminals here to solder to them, and they, you can't do that once it's screwed down. So I'm going to wait until I'm ready to wire it before I put this in. Now, the coil is one that I had, particularly nice coil. Um, it has an inductance of 250 microhenries. Um, it's wound with number 16 Litz wire. It's a wire called Litz wire. It is a wire that is made up of many turns or many pieces of fine wire. Let me see if I can get a knife. Skin this a little. Show you what Litz wire really is. See, it's made up of literally hundreds and hundreds of turns of little fine wire, all bundled together. See how that is? And that's called Litz wire. What that does is it tends to even out the flow of current through the wire. If you have <clears throat> just a solid piece of wire, then the current flows only on the very surface of the wire. So that surface area is all you get. However, if you have Litz wire, you have a whole bunch of little small wires, and that uh, prevents the magnetic field from forcing the current into the outer, outer layer. Uh, there's a certain theoretical problem with that, um, which makes it to where Litz wire is not that much better than solid wire, at least at, at most frequencies. Um, <clears throat> you've got a range from about 50 kilohertz up to 500 kilohertz where Litz wire gives you a noticeable improvement in the Q. However, when you get above 500 kilohertz, then you start losing the advantage, and when you get below 50 kilohertz, you start losing the advantage. And uh, <clears throat> that becomes, uh, it's because the, uh, because the wire has an uh, internal resistance that makes up for the, uh, for the, the spreading effect of the, um, of the strands. So, for, it, as it turns out, for a broadcast band, which is 500 kilohertz to 1700 kilohertz, <clears throat> Litz wire is at the upper end of its usable range. It, it's by the time you get up to 1500 to 1700 kilohertz, the difference between a solid wire and Litz wire is so small that it, it just uh, it's questionable as to whether it's worth bothering with. Okay, now we're going to mount this on here. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I need two screws, and I'm just going to go down into there. All right, I like this position the best. Okay, now, um, okay, now that mounts the coil. Now, the first one we're going to do, we're going to put this, uh, okay, now we have to go from the, uh, from the top of the coil to our antenna terminal, and that will be our, our, uh, our 50 picofarad capacitor, okay? 
put another piece of Okay, see that gets our capacitor mounted in there. Okay, next, uh, okay, the center tap of the coil goes to the crystal. So we have to go from the center tap wires, which are in here, and we're going to put them to a terminal right here. And then that will go down to, to here. So I need another screw. We're going to have to make sure that we miss these two tubes that will be sitting right here. So it looks like it's going to be, um, be okay. gets our center tap, or 75% tap, connected to here. Okay. Now, our ground, which is the bottom of the coil here, is going to go... Alright, I need another screw there and that'll be for ground. Okay, and then this one is going to connect onto there. Okay, I'm just going to cut that. Okay. So that's our tap and our ground will go right there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, shit. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, hell. Hell, I keep cutting it off and it's still too short. No big deal, no big deal. Just. Stand it in there. <laughs> Plenty of wire in there. I could have just, if I had a common sense, I would have measured it first. And that gets our, the end goes to here, which is ground, and our tap goes to here. Okay. Now, these two here go to the tuning condenser, and this one here goes to the crystal detector.
That gets the top of the coil to the stator. Now to the outside, the rotor, we have to go to the ground. Okay, so I have to go from here to here to here. Okay, so we're going to go here and down. That much over that much. Out that much. Good. Okay. Now we got to go from there to there.
okay? And then we have no trouble. Man. Too much trouble. Little bit. Okay. Okay, that takes care of the ground onto the coil and onto the uh, tuning condenser and the tuning condenser onto the um, coil. Okay, so the tune circuit is wired. Next we have to go from the center tap to the uh, crystal detector. Okay. Here. Go down. All right. Okay, that takes care of that wire there, that wire there, the capacitor, ground wire, and the ground wire to the coil, and the ground wire to the tuning condenser. Okay, we got all that wired in, all the way up to the input of the uh, of the crystal detector. Okay. Next thing we have to do, we've got to wire our. Uh, our tube amp. Okay, now what we've got here, I've gone ahead and wrapped some wires through some holes here to make terminals to connect our our different things to. I've got the input, I've got the ground, and then I've got um, output B plus, A plus, and ground again. Okay, and then we're going to use these two center posts on the tube sockets also is ground. They can be grounded. That'll make us a nice tie point for everything that goes to ground. Okay, let's get started.
Okay. Now I'm going to put solder on all the tube socket. Uh, these will be ready to go. Okay, that gets all of our connections tinned up. Now, what we're going to do first is connect up the ground. I'm just going to use a piece, uh, piece of bus wire for that. Okay. All right, that's our main ground connection there. I can take that, cut it there, and then okay. very good. <clears throat> okay, now that gets all right. I'll go over the circuit here. This is what we've got. Okay, this is our tuned circuit here, which makes up that great big coil and our variable condenser, and that, that's for tuning the, the set. Okay, we have the 10 to 100 picofarad coupling capacitor for the uh, antenna. This lets us uh, adjust the volume. Um, <clears throat> we, we don't want to adjust the volume by um, simply uh, using a, a volume control in the amplifier, because what we want is to have the highest Q possible in our tune circuit so that um, so that we can separate stations when we have a, a really loud signal. When we have a lot of loud signals, um, you know, we're generating volts at this point here. We may generate one to two volts here, putting it in the amplifier and just saturate crap out of it. And uh, we'd have to put us a, a volume control here um, to load down or, or cut the signal down. But that would still keep the Q very low here. So by being able to adjust this coupling, uh, we can, when we have it set to 10 picofarads, this thing is just virtually unloaded by the antenna. So the Q is very high, and this, lets, this cuts the signal down in amplitude, so we, can, we get the proper amplitude through the circuit, and yet we um, increase the Q so we can separate those stations. Okay, so we have that uh, small condenser that we, we do that with. Now our main tuning condenser, tunes the circuit to, you know, from 500 to uh, 1700 or something like that uh, kilohertz. Okay, our cat whisker, or 1 in 34, uh, simple, we're tapping about 75% of the total coil. The lower down this tap is put, the less uh, effect on the Q the, uh, the amplifier circuit has. So it will... If, if we lower it down more, we're cutting the signal down, but we're increasing the Q. So, while we're decreasing the signal by the tap position, we're increasing the Q so the signal comes up by that uh, same proportion. And it makes it to where we can cut the tap down and we don't really lose that much volume. If, if we cut it to 50%, we may not be at 50% signal. It may still be 75% because if we retune it to get maximum signal with a higher Q, the, the amplitude will come up enough to make up for the decrease. But making uh, some experiments here, I found that 75% gives us a really good uh, relationship between the Q and the signal level. 
uh, we get virtually the same signal level at 75% as we do at 100%, and yet our Q is noticeably higher. So we have that ability to separate stations that are closely uh, spaced. Okay, next we have a 100K and a 001 on the output of the detector, and that gives us our filtering, and um, the 100K carries the voltage back down again, because the, the diode will pull the voltage up, but it can't pull the voltage back down. So we have the diode pulling it up with signal, and the resistor pulling it back down. So our time constant between the 100K and the 001 sets our audio frequency response. Okay, we put that into our first amplifier. Our first amplifier is a voltage amplifier. And we have, um, we, we have a reduced uh, screen grid voltage on it, which makes it to where we can run the gain a lot higher. And we use a high-value uh, high plate resistor. By cutting the screen voltage, we can have this high-value plate resistor without um, uh, saturating the tube. Okay, so we have a uh, bias resistor. This 2K resistor sets the, the negative grid bias on the tube, and that sets it to where we're at about a third of the power supply voltage. So we have about 15 volts on the plate. Uh, it, it's, you know, 15 to 20 volts in that area. So that's enough to uh, give this tube very high gain. It has a gain of about 150. Okay, then we take that signal, we couple it to the grid of the power amplifier. We're using the same type of tube for both, since our power amplifier here is uh, a kind of a joke power amplifier, because we're only looking for 50 milliwatts. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not, it, you can hardly call it power. But uh, we run this tube, for maximum transconductance. We're not concerned with gain. We're only interested in transconductance because our output load is entirely current controlled. It's not voltage controlled, it's current controlled. So we want maximum transconductance to get the maximum signal, maximum gain. So we, uh, we put full screen voltage on the tube and uh, we just ground out the cathode directly. No bias at all on it. And that gives us our maximum plate current through it. And it turns out with 45 volts on it, um, that gives us a very nice operating characteristic. So it's about in a third up on the uh, characteristic curve there. So we're right in a good gain uh, range. And that is all we've got. That's all we have for the, uh, for the amplifier. The total gain here is about um, 5,000 or so when you multiply the two gains of the two tubes together, and that gives us enough to take millivolt signals and get a, a fairly decent uh, volume out of a speaker, and, you know, out of a, a headphones, it, it may be too much for headphones. <laughs> okay, and that's, that's what we're going to uh, have for the, uh, for the gain in the radio. Okay, and that takes care of those. All right, so now, We've got a, um, we have to go from, our, with our bypass condensers, all right, we're going to go from B plus to ground with one of them, okay? So we'll stick one of them right here, all right, and we'll bend this one the other way, and we're going to go down to the B plus, okay? Okay. Okay, that one. There. Okay, and this one. Here. Okay. That's our bypass. So this one here goes from B plus on one side through pole one to, to common to ground. Okay, and that's it. On this side, we go to B plus through the capacitor to common. All right, and we look at everything, make sure nothing's touching. Okay, it looks all good. To put this bypass in, okay, it will go, I can put it in there right like that. Okay, we'll just bend one back around to there and the other one right down. Okay. 
okay, we'll just turn that around and it will go right there. Okay, that looks good. And we'll cut off. Okay. Okay, that's that. Now, the other one, I have to just get there. All right. All right, we need 100K resistor. All right. Now I got to be out of the way. We got a stud that goes there, so I got to bend this around to where we're not going to get near that stud. All right, very good. Okay, and that's it. Okay, there we are. It's all wired up. Okay, now I need to put some solder on the tops of these. goes um, here. Okay. And then our it's gonna go right here. Okay. That looks just neat as can be. Alright, a few more wires. We had to go from here on to here. Very good. Okay, then we have ground that has to go to here. That gets ground connected up, signal input connected up. Okay, now the next one we're going to hook up is going to be the filament to here. Okay, so that will be like there.
Okay. All right, that takes care of A+. Plus. Next one will be B+. Plus. Okay, that's going to go from here over to here. All right, I'll need some more wire. takes care of B plus. Next we have to run the signal. Okay, I'm going to run the signal to um, this outside one here. Gets that hooked up. Now I got one more wire to go between these two. That's it. The wiring is complete. We're now ready to connect it up and see if it works. Now I should be able to measure here and see the filament, and I do. Nothing here. Go to the very highest scale. Nothing and nothing. Okay, so everything ohms out correctly. All right, so we just hook a power supply to it, and um, we're going to test it. Okay, now, what I've done is I've added a small tuning condenser in series with the antenna so I can cut the um, amount of signal going into the radio. Now, what that does, see, here's connecting the uh, antenna directly. a jumble. Now, if we put a tuning condenser on here, that's one. Okay, we got one right here. We tune it. Right. 
God is knowing that God has all things we separate those stations when we have a variable input. Now, what this does, by reducing the input using a condenser, we increase the Q of the coil because we're unloading the coil and we're reducing the signal down so that these super strong signals don't wash out all the adjacent channels. And that lets us go ahead See, we got that one. See, and we can just separate those quite clearly by doing that. All right, so what I'm going to have to do, i got to mount this somewhere. Okay. this 50 and we're going to make it a 12 to 100 picofarad variable okay and that way uh, for the lower frequencies where we need a little more signal we can increase this slightly and get a little more signal into it yet for the higher frequencies um, we can cut it down to, to a, a very low capacitance which cuts the loading. Not only does it cut the loading on the uh, coil, increasing the Q, but it, it also um, reduces the signal level so that we can um, we can keep from overdriving the amplifier. Okay. I have a little collar here. goes right over it. And that goes on. Gorgeous. All right, so we've got the got the condenser mounted in there, and we can just adjust it as much as we want. Okay. Okay. Turn on the power. <clears throat> Let it warm up a little bit. <laughs> All right, give me the diode. <laughs> That's some real practical stuff, huh? All right, let's try some iron pyrite. I've got some iron pyrite here, and it is much more practical than the um, zinc sulfate. All right, this is a nice looking little piece. Let me. Um, Well, <laughs> isn't that the shit? <laughs> I 
don't know. I don't know. It's just beyond me. Sometimes I can get it, sometimes I can't. Um, damn thing's for sure working, because here's a regular diode at 1 in 34. <laughs> what some people do, they take a germanium diode and they drill out the shaft on this adjuster and they hide that germanium diode in there. And it makes it to where all you have to do is make it touch anywhere and it works. And I'll look into doing that. Because um, th this is absurd. Some people may have the uh, patience to do this, but I don't. Oh, that's a load of crap, you know? <laughs> I can't find any place on there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hide a diode underneath there. And um, Okay, to solve this uh, critical adjustment nonsense, I'm going to go ahead and cheat. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, uh, put a diode down underneath here. <laughs> Shoot, yeah. <laughs> this will make it to where... It is no problem to get contact. And nobody needs to know. We'll keep it keep it our secret. <laughs> on, on YouTube, of course. Alright, power is on. Why? Oh. Okay, that's it. Now it works good. Very good. So we have that diode down under there. It still seems like you got you a <laughs> connection, but it's really going through the diode. Yeah. <laughs> okay, power off. How nice that is, huh? And in here we got the uh, coupling condenser. Our two tube amplifier. Okay, that looks good. 